In today's video, we have all the latest news and rumors from around the NHL. We're focusing on some trade talk involving the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Edmonton Oilers, as well as the Los Angeles Kings. We also have a potential big deal that might be brewing between the Carolina Hurricanes and the St. Louis Blues. We also have some big updates from around the league, including a contract extension for the Devils general manager. We also have updates from the NHL waiver wire. Some new mandates may be coming through for cut-resistant equipment, as well as Carter Hart taking an indefinite leave of absence from the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll discuss all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have tons of news and some trade rumors to take a look at tonight. A uh, very busy day in the NHL. Uh, obviously tonight has been a little bit of a different day for me, so we're doing a, a different uh, setup here for recording just for tonight. We'll get back to the regular uh, recording studio tomorrow. Uh, so news first from the NHL waiver wire. Some quick updates. Yesterday we had Mitchell Stevens of the Montreal Canadiens and Adam Ernie of the Edmonton Oilers, both available on waivers. And they have both cleared. So there was no claims on either player. They've both gone through. So they can both be reassigned to their AHL affiliate teams. There's no other new players uh, on waivers here today. Uh, some other updates around the NHL regarding some injuries and roster moves. Uh, we have the Anaheim Ducks today called up young defenseman Olin Zellweger, uh, two-time WHL defenseman of the year. Uh, looks to be making his NHL debut tonight. So another young, uh, very, you know, potentially a huge part of their future getting uh, his first look at NHL duty tonight. So it'll be interesting to see how things go for Zellweger. Uh, the Seattle Kraken today have returned goaltender Chris Dreger down to the American Hockey League. So he's been demoted. Uh, we also had the Washington Capitals today have sent down Hendricks Lapierre back to the minors uh, because they were able to activate Rasmus Sandin and needed a roster spot. Uh, tonight as well, Max Pacioretty should be uh, playing in his 10th game, which will unlock a million-dollar bonus. Uh, of course, he had one of those short veteran contracts that has bonuses built in because he's been off so long on injured reserve the past season or more, uh, which he qualified for. So a $1 million bonus for getting 10 games. There's more bonuses he can earn as I believe in the games uh, up to 15 and 20, he'll get more uh, again. So... So it should be a good day for Patch Ready to make a, make, a, make a nice paycheck there for sure. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens today uh, activated Tanner Pearson. He's ready and he played tonight in their game against the Ottawa Senators. They also recalled Arbor Jackeye from Laval. Uh, he also appeared in tonight's NHL contest for the Canadiens. Uh, Kovacevic was back in and Jordan Harris was out. I don't know if Jordan Harris is dealing with an injury or if that was just a uh, coach's choice changing the lineup. I'm not quite sure that wasn't quite clear. Uh, I did miss the beginning of the game because I had other commitments at the rink that I had to be at. Uh, the Maple Leafs today also activated uh, tough guy Ryan Reeves. Of course, we talked about the other day how he had an interview with Sportsnet's Luke Fox and was kind of complaining that um, he'd been healthy and ready to roll here for a number of weeks and was still sitting on IR and was, you know, obviously didn't really come out and say too much, but he just said that he's been waiting and, you know, it's not his spot to, to make the lineup decisions or what have you. Uh, it raised a lot of eyebrows around the league considering that a lot of people were saying, well, if he's healthy, he should be able to play or at least he shouldn't be on injured reserve at the very least. I mean, doesn't mean for sure he gets in the lineup because obviously the coaches have, uh, you know, decisions to make in that regard. Um, but at the same time, in the same article, he talked about how bad his knees were and that he can't play without a knee brace. And if he cuts a certain way, sometimes his like, kneecap pops out. Like, that to me is a major red flag. Um, might explain why his skating has slowed down so much. And he said he had, he's had played with these knee braces for quite some time. Um, I honestly think if the Leafs really wanted to have him deemed unfit to play, that it wouldn't be that difficult. But he was activated today. So for him... Uh, Playing with knee braces is normal, so he considers that healthy, but it doesn't sound like his knees are in very good shape. And he had a three-year deal for the Leafs. I, I really think that contract long-term could be a little bit of an issue. I mean, thankfully, it's not that huge. I know some people were speculating that if he wants to complain too much to the media, that maybe the Leafs will slap him on waivers and demote him because he's not going to get picked up uh, given the long-term contract. So we'll see where the future of Ryan Reeves and the Leafs go. I do wonder if we'll see this revisited at all 
later in the year. Uh, we also got word today on TSN's Insider Trading from uh, Insider Chris Johnston that the NHL appears to be getting closer to uh, making some mandates that come in regarding cut-resistant equipment that would include net guards, of course, after we saw the horrific accident that happened uh, in England with a player getting his, th- his throat slit and ultimately losing his life from it. Uh, you know, Obviously, a lot of players were starting to uh, check out net guards and be a little bit more careful with that stuff. Um, still seems like it's a low number around the league that it's actually actively using them. Um, and there's other protective equipment too that you can wear like on your sleeves, like for your wrist. And of course there's the, um, the stuff, the socks too, special socks that they can wear that protect like their Achilles and things like that. So some of those things, it's not quite clear exactly what the mandate is going to be, but there's supposed to be meetings around the all-star break. Um, and that it probably won't be effective till next year, but the NHL does appear to be getting closer to mandating some type of equipment in that regard. We'll have to wait and see further details, but at least they're um, trying to make it uh, you know a little bit safer here, making it a, a you know mandatory thing, which I think is good. So we'll see where that goes. We also got big news in Jersey today. Uh, General Manager Tom Fitzgerald has signed a multi-year extension, uh, which I think is a good idea. I think the team is uh, right in their um, you know, process to do that. He's done a pretty good job there. I mean, the team is underperforming this year, but they've dealt with a lot of injuries, uh, and they've also had a lot of changes to their blue line. I know, uh, you know, you take away Ryan Graves, you take away Damon Severson, and then you take away Dougie Hamilton to a long-term injury, and that is a lot of youth now playing on that blue line. It's not that the future's not bright there, but, you know, Nemich, uh, Hughes have bright futures, but um, you know, they're still quite young. You're still going to see some defensive miscues and mistakes. And clearly, like, I think they're like, that's a, and the goaltending hasn't been the greatest either. Um, but for the most part, has he done a good job and really, um, you know, putting together a real good team? He definitely has. And they're on the upswing and they still have a very bright future, in my opinion. So it's obviously, uh, I think, in their best interest to keep him around. So he signs a multi year extension and he gets an additional job title he's now going to be team president and general manager so i'm sure that gives him a bit of a bump in pay as well um with the new contract so good on jersey i think that's the right move i do wonder what the future of lindy ruff i know he's got a great relationship with jack hughes and i know jack loves him as a coach but uh and obviously he's got some you know um sway there we're considering how important he is to the team but at the same time like you know, look at the Ottawa. I know it's not, not the same scenario, but those players absolutely love DJ Smith, and they resisted change. And now, finally, after a bunch of games with new coaching staff, they're playing way better. Um, you know, going to make you wonder, if, if, even though some of the players really like him, if is, is he the right coach, the right voice? Or is it more of a issue of injuries and roster construction? It'll be interesting to see. Uh, Fitzgerald's next couple of moves here and how they address the, the rest of the year there with the New Jersey Devils. We also saw some history last night. Uh, we had a situation where essentially the Pittsburgh Penguins, we know, have not had a great year, inconsistent. They're uh, out of the playoffs right now, but they're still within striking distance if they can get their act together on a decent win streak. But even last night, they put the puck in their own net on a delayed penalty. Uh, the, they're playing the Arizona Coyotes, delayed penalty against Arizona, so the Penguins pull their goalie, goalie to the bench. Uh, Chris Letang has the puck. He's circling back. They regroup in his own end before they break out. Looked like he was waiting for a bit of a line change to finish. Makes sense, right? You want to kind of regroup and get everybody on the same page here. Uh, you see defensemen do that all the time. They'll hold the puck in their own end, waiting for the forwards especially to complete their change. Uh, Evgeny Malkin comes in behind him, uh, so, uh, which is a pretty normal setup on like a power play type rush for the Penguins. Latang does a bit of a drop pass to Malkin, probably a couple of feet wide right of the right side of the net. It hits Malkin's stick. He doesn't handle it properly, and he goes right in the empty net. So, like, prime example in Pittsburgh, when it rains, it pours. And the thing, too, um, that's interesting about this is it actually helped the Coyotes make history. Uh, so, the Arizona Coyotes, uh, actually, at the time, uh, I believe they were on a power play. I've seen a note that the Coyotes scored a power play goal without having a power play shot on net. 
Uh, it's pretty crazy. So, like, the Penguins, like, just, it, it's an insane sequence. If you haven't seen it, certainly, I know I have it posted on my Twitter profile, so certainly check that out if you haven't already. It's a, a crazy clip that you just, you don't see it very often. That's why teams pull their goalie, because it's supposed to be safe. But if you're not careful, it can backfire real quick and end up in your own net. Uh, another item here that happened today as well, uh, which has gotten a lot of people talking, is the Philadelphia Flyers announced this afternoon that... Goaltender Carter Hart is this came completely out of the blue. Nobody's seen it coming. Has asked for and has been granted a indefinite leave of absence from the team, citing personal reasons. And the club is not going to have any further comment on it in the future. Um, the Flyers are having a decent year. Hart and uh, Sammy Erson have both been, you know, for the most part. Uh, you know, good tandem for the Flyers. Uh, what's going on with Carter Hart? Now, a lot of I've seen a lot of different people talking on social media today. Lots of different speculation. Now, I'm not going to um, really speculate too much about what it could be because personal reasons are personal reasons. But I will say this: the interesting part is, uh, 48 hours prior to, uh, or was it 48? It was 24 to 48 hours before Hart took this leave of absence, we saw the same thing happen in Calgary with Dylan Dubé. People are starting to draw a connection. Now, we have no way to prove this, so I'm not going to come on here and say that, oh, this has to be connected to the 2018 Canadian World Junior team that's been under investigation because they were both members of that team. Yes, they were. That We don't know that. But I, I just know, and I do think it's fair, though, and I understand why people are drawing that conclusion or at the very least wondering. Now, for me, I'm not going to say it is or it isn't because I don't know. But it is interesting that we don't really know much about either situation. Um, they're both on that team, and we've been waiting forever to get an announcement of some sort of the outcome of the investigation. And now players like them that are connected to that team out of the blue taking leave of absence. It just seems odd. Now, there could be completely other things going on in their personal lives that we don't know enough about, and it could be just a coincidence that two guys from that team are off. If a third member in the next short term here ends up in the same predicament, well, it's really going to draw a uh, much bigger reaction from media and fans. So we'll see. But unfortunately for the Flyers, they're going to be with heart, without heart. For an indefinite period of time, we don't really know, but that's what people are talking about out there. My job, I feel, to you is just to let you know what I see going on in the world. We talk about it, kind of analyze it a little bit. I don't know if it's completely fair, but like I said, I do understand. And unfortunately, when I seen Carter Hart make this, um, or the Flyers announce the Hart news, that's where my head went first, too. I was thinking, I wonder, is there a connection? We'll have to wait and see. I don't know, but... Are we getting near a 2018 World Junior um, outcome of that investigation? Maybe. We'll see, I guess. Time will tell in the future. Uh, well, one other quick thing as well before we get into the trade rumors. Uh, Ellie Freeman was on the Jeff Merrick show today, as he is, uh, usually four or five days a week. And they were talking about uh, Senators forward Shane Pinto, who's been back from suspension, played his second game tonight. Uh, of course, joined the uh, Sens for his first game against the Flyers. On Sunday, had a good game, drew up uh, one assist. Uh, tonight, he scored his first goal of the season. Another great game. He's had a big impact on his team since he's been back. There was already talk when he before he ever played, after he uh, signed the one-year deal, that there were already had discussions around a long-term extension because it's a unique scenario where he just signed, but he's already eligible for an extension. And they're looking at, now Freeman made mention that a long-term deal for him probably isn't going to be eight years. Uh, I believe he's four years away from being UFA. So they're looking at a five- to six-year deal is what they're talking about. And the way he's played since he's come back, he's clearly very important to this team. And I really suggest Ottawa get that done as soon as possible because the longer they wait, it's probably only going to get more expensive. They're lucky to get him on league minimum for the rest of the year, but obviously with that suspension, had a major impact on his value and what he could ask for. So different scenario. But, yeah, this Pinto extension probably needs to come together sooner than later. Um, so we'll see there. Uh, speaking of the Senators, too, Jacob Chikrin uh, did an interview with Ian Mendez of The Athletic and talking about 
how he he addressed all the trade rumors and he wanted to talk to the media and address the fact that people saying that he's not happy in Ottawa and is unlikely to re-sign. It's com- his exact words were, this is completely and utterly ridiculous and talked about how much he loved it. As of course I said the other day, after the news kind of started coming out with some reporters saying stuff like that, he put it a post on his Instagram with the uh, interview he just recently did for Faces Magazine in Ottawa. Again, that article kind of talked about how much he loved it. Like, it, it's insane. So the only real conclusion right now, to my opinion, that NHL insiders are saying Chikrin could be a potential trade piece is that he's not signed long-term. Sanderson and Shabbat are on long-term deals. He is not, and that's the only reason. He's got one more year. Uh, I think there's absolutely a strong desire from him to extend and stay. Well, we'll see how the negotiations go because that's going to maybe be another story. But it just goes to show you that the reporters talking about how he is unhappy there and as much as it was a bit of a homecoming for him that he's already kind of lost the appeal is completely, according to his own words, ridiculous. So we'll see what the Sens do here as the future goes on and what the future holds for Chikram. But to me, I think if he has his way, it'll be in Ottawa. But again, there's other factors at play on the business side of things. Now, in the trade rumor section of the video, some players that we want to talk about here, including Toronto, uh, there is talk from, uh, obviously, some reporters, including Chris Johnson, who is one of the most in, um, plugged-in reporters when it comes to the Leafs on the intel. He says now, because the Leafs, we don't know what they're going to do at the deadline yet. There's a lot of people that think they may not add a whole lot because they're not confident this group is a really cup contender. But he says that if they are going to make a move, don't be surprised if Nick Robertson is one of the main trade pieces that are dangled to help this team get an upgrade for the deadline. Um, Clearly, at this point, Robertson's been in and out of the lineup, hasn't been a consistent guy there all year, but he has played well as of late, and he has generated a buzz around the NHL that for teams that know that they may talk to the Leafs at the deadline, he's going to be a piece that a lot of teams ask for, and I think it's fair to say that at this stage of his career, the Maple Leafs don't have a you know, a firm spot where they see him well into the future in that lineup. So clearly it's a case where, you know, he could move on and go elsewhere and really take his career to another level and get more opportunity. Um, Certainly he's a player that falls into that category. So we'll see where things go. I mean, when it comes to the Leafs, uh, I think defense is probably an area they need to look at and maybe a depth centerman. Uh, if they can do it, if they're going to make moves. But like I said, this team has spent a lot of assets in the last number of years kind of going for it. It went hardcore last year. They, yes, they won around for the first time in a long time, but then to lose the way they did in the second round, it does make you question if it was worth it. Um, and the other thing too is the NHL this year, there's a lot of teams that are kind of still in it. At this stage of the season, you know, there's a lot of that, you know, teams that are, it's wide open, you could say. There's not a lot of clear cut favorites. Like, there's the number of teams that you could see winning the cup is a big number. Um, so, teams might be a little bit reluctant to pay the high prices teams are looking for. And I do wonder if that'll impact what some teams do like to leave. So, we'll see where that goes. But Robertson could be their main trade piece if they do want to make upgrades. Uh, another team to look at is the Los Angeles Kings, a team that's been. Uh, struggling as of late. I know the uh, reports there indicate that don't be surprised if a couple of uh, younger players in the organization are the main pieces they use to dangle to make an upgrade. Now, it's believed goaltending is one of their main areas of uh, focus here. Uh, in the forward group, they're getting Victor Arvidsson back probably sometime in the next month. So they feel like adding a you know a veteran forward who can score like him is kind of like their version of getting a, an upgrade at the deadline anyway. So the forward group should already be you know, improved by him coming back. Um, their decor, for the most part, is relatively good. Um, and scoring has been their issue lately. Arvidsson should help with that. And keeping the puck out of their net has been an issue as well. So getting goaltending help would be their main areas of focus. But former first-round pick Alex Turcott at this stage is still not materialized to an NHL player. And it's quite likely that they will try to dangle his you know, uh, his name out there being a, a trade piece. Don't be surprised if he gets a fresh start. And if he is not traded, I would say he'll be moved in the summer. I think the Kings are ready to move on and uh, don't see a long-term spot in their lineup for him. And Arthur Kaliev has also been 
I think it's fair to say a little bit of frustration there on the in and out of the lineup, healthy scratches at times. He was discussed as a, a name on TSN Insider Trading tonight as well that the uh, the Kings could dangle for any future uh, uh, deadline upgrades as well. So a couple of interesting young players there that might grab some attention from around the league. Another young player looking for a bit of a change of scenery or more of an opportunity is young Oilers defenseman Philip Broberg. Uh, again, the Oilers... Uh, we saw them sign Corey Perry. They got Dylan Holloway back. Feeling around the league is that they probably won't make other additions at the forward position. Maybe adding some depth on defense. Uh, and they may go into the goalie market. It's not quite clear if they're going to be comfortable going with Skinner and Pickard or if Campbell will get another shot. Jack Campbell is 4-0 with a really good save percentage in his last four AHL starts. So things have turned around for him. I don't know how quickly or when or if that'll lead to another NHL opportunity. But I don't think, I think the Oilers have time to be patient as long as they're winning here like they have been to take their time with that. But regardless of what happens with other upgrades of the team, Broberg, again, mentioned on TSN Insider Trading as a young player who would love a change of scenery or at the very least a change in the organization to get more opportunity. He just wants to play. He'd love for that to be in Edmonton, but if it's not going to be, then he'd like to go elsewhere for an opportunity. So if they do make future um, additional moves here at the deadline, Broberg's definitely a name to keep an eye on as well. And lastly, I do also want to talk about another potential big deal that might be going down. There's, there's rumors about the Carolina Hurricanes and the St. Louis Blues been discussing a major, what you'd call a fairly big of a blockbuster deal involving goalie Jordan Bennington. Now, we know the Blues are a team that's you know underperforming. Uh, I think they're still going to be going through some changes in the next year or two, or at least the next year for sure. I've heard Colton Pareko's name out there again as a, a player that uh, Doug Armstrong would like to see if he could find a, a way to uh, get a, a change of scenery for him. But Bennington's name has been linked to the Hurricanes. Uh, rumor has it that the Hurricanes, well, it's not really a rumor because we know for a given that they want to add in the goalie department. There's been tons of confirmed reports in that sense because of all the issues they've had. Bennington, obviously a guy who won the Stanley Cup a few years ago. You know, is there better options on the market? There might be, but if you look at all the names that are available, he's one of the few that would have a cup to his resume. And if he could produce anything like he did in the Blues in 2019, then they might be in wise to make that their move. Uh, some names linked to potentially being available in a trade, uh, looking at probably some sort of package that would revolve around Michael Bunting, maybe Cock and the Emmy being involved. Those would be the main two roster players I think that the Hurricanes would be willing to include and maybe a, you know, a first-round pick or something of that nature. So we're looking at a couple of roster players and maybe a pick or two. It may not be exactly that, but those are the pieces that – have reportedly been discussed on the hurricane side to make that kind of deal happen. So clearly that would be a major move. They would have Bennington under contract for a few years. Um, I don't sure what that would mean for the future of the other goalies in the organization as they deal with injuries. We don't know the future of Freddie Anderson either. Um, so we'll have to see, but uh, no secret that the hurricanes are very much in the goalie market and are interested in making moves. Bennington could be an addition, um, uh, well, interesting. Um, that's very interesting on the uh, addition side of the hurricane. So we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, I know Bunting name has been out there. I'm not surprised to hear that they're willing to move a first round pick. And Cock and the Emmys, I kind of wonder if they have buyer's remorse on that and how all that went down. He's been a good player at times, but not sure that he's really living up to a player that deserved an eight-year deal. So we'll see where that goes. But could the Hurricanes and Blues hook up on a blockbuster deal? Are the Oilers and Leafs making other moves that could involve some younger players as well as the LA Kings? Let me know your thoughts on that as well. All the other news and rumors discussed in today's video down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.